The iPad has always played a rather odd role in my life. I could never quite work out how to use it consistently throughout the day until now, thanks to an accessory I didn't know I needed. I have lots of iPads in this studio and at home, and this presents a pretty interesting problem. How to put each one of them to use. I feel it my duty to do so after all. I am in a privileged slash expensive position to have access to nearly every iPad Apple makes, and it seems only fair that I try and find a use case for each one. However, using multiple iPads for content consumption does feel a bit extravagant, which is why I've been looking at different ways to use my iPad Armory alongside my Macs at each of the desk setups I have in this studio. I've probably got too many of those too. This has led me down the path of the fascinating, yet often overlooked iPad accessory, the magnetic stand. I've found four which are worth looking at if you're keen on significantly increasing the functionality of your iPad. In my experience, iPads have to fight hard to play a role in whatever it is I'm doing. And Apple knows this, which is why they keep integrating the iPad more wholesomely into their ecosystem. Sidecar and Universal Control are great examples of Apple fighting the iPad's corner. The former enables you to use the iPad as a second monitor for your Mac, which I use all the time, while the latter is an ingenious way to share the same keyboard and trackpad between your Mac and iPad. Both of these features are brilliant methods for integrating the iPad into your daily work, but they're rather incomplete without something to place your iPad on, hence the need for some kind of stand. The other reason for using an iPad stand is if you want to turn Apple's tablet into a kind of full-on touchscreen computer, which with the addition of a keyboard and trackpad or mouse, you can. The stand is actually the missing element you didn't know you needed. So that's two reasons you might need a stand for your iPad. Let's look at four awesome examples. So the first iPad stand on my list is the Chargen Pro Magflot. As always, I really hope I'm pronouncing that right. This starts at $139. It's compatible with the iPad Pro 12.9 inch, the iPad Pro 11 inch, and the iPad Air 4 and 5. It's just been a three year blood, sweat and tears kind of product. Those were the words of Chargen Pro's co-founder Charlie when I confirmed that I'd be featuring his magnetic iPad stand in this review. Clearly, this product means an awful lot to Charge M Pro, and I think their enthusiasm for it reveals how transformative this type of iPad accessory can be. This stand actually started life as a Kickstarter and Indiegogo project. It raised over $200,000, which gives you some idea about how popular this was just when it was announced. And the Magflot really does have a lot going for it. It's made from solid stainless steel. It's very, very well put together. If I just take the iPad off, it's got this very nice microfiber lined section here, which is where you put your iPad on. And this is magnetized, which is a feature of all of the stands I'm gonna show you today. So you literally just take your iPad, place it against it, and you're done. There's also full 360 degree rotation on offer, which enables you to position the iPad either horizontally or vertically, but it can be tilted at pretty much every angle too. So you can see here, I can literally tilt it all the way to the top to give me this kind of surface to play with, or pretty much straight like that. You can basically move this thing wherever you want. And it's a really nice hinge as well. It's nice, it's just stiff enough, and there's not too much resistance. But there is one feature which I absolutely love about this Magflot stand, which is so easily overlooked by other manufacturers, and that is cable management. And what they've done is really straightforward. You have this hole on the back of the stand. They all have this, because it's just a, an obvious thing to put your cables through. But Charge M Pro also give you a very nice cable. It's nice and long, which is good. Are you listening, Apple? Nice long braided cable, nice and tough. And it has, crucially, this angled end on here. So when you feed this through the stand, if I do it the right way, and into your iPad, because it's got that angled bracket on the end of it, it so neatly sits in there you barely know it's there. You've got no cable hanging out. And because it goes through the hole around the back, it's just so neat and tidy. So in terms of what I like about the Magflot, it's got a very neat charging solution, slick looks, and a super strong magnet for your iPad. And in terms of what I don't like, it's not particularly portable. You can't fold the base to make it easy to put into a rucksack like you can with some of the other ones I'm gonna show you in a moment. It is rather pricey, I think and there's no iPad mini option, which for someone like me is a bit of a downer. Next up, we have the Benx Infinity iPad stand. Now this is $79.99 and it's compatible with the iPad Pro 12.9 inch, the iPad Pro 11 inch, the iPad Air 4 and 5 and 
thankfully, the iPad Mini 6. Now, I am a huge fan of Benks. Their AirPods Max stand remains one of the most popular accessories I've ever reviewed on this channel, and for good reason. I think it looks and feels like Apple should have made it. So when Benks got in touch and asked if I'd like to take a look at their new Infinity iPad stand, I jumped at the chance. The Infinity stand is the cheapest option on this list, but that doesn't mean you need to sacrifice build quality. Just like every Banks product I've tested, the Infinity is built like a tank. The hinge is very stiff, possibly a little bit too stiff, but the magnets very confidently hold onto your iPad. You know, that is not going anywhere at all. Now, I opted for the iPad mini version, which fits the iPad mini 6 perfectly. And if that is your iPad of choice, the Infinity is the only stand on this list that caters for Apple's tiniest tablet. I really loved having this next to my studio display in the studio or the iMac in the kitchen. It just transforms the iPad mini into this very enjoyable thing to use while you're sat at a desk. It is double hinged as well. So this is actually a pre-production version. This is not the one that you'd get if you bought it. The one that you would get would have a hinge at the bottom here as well, which means you can fold the entire thing flat if you wanna transport it in your bag. Again, there is lots of adjustability no matter where you want to kind of angle your iPad. You can have it horizontal, vertical, like that, like that, whatever you want. I think Banks has done it again. The only criticism I have about this iPad stand is that if you go for the iPad mini version, the plate that you place the iPad mini on is the exact same size as the iPad mini. And that makes detaching the iPad mini a little bit tricky. You have to kind of either put your whole hand around it to pull it off, or sort of push it through here, through the camera cutout. On the other stands, there's normally a section missing from this plate, which means you can easily just pull the iPad away. That's the only thing I'd say is a bit of a downer, but it's a small gripe. So in terms of what I like about the Infinity stand from Banks, it's got a very sturdy design, great price, and lots of compatibility, including the iPad mini. What I don't like, well, it's tricky to detach the iPad mini. The swivel hinge is a bit too stiff and you don't get a charging cable like you do with the Charge N Pro. Next up, we have the MagFit iPad Pro docking station, which starts at $200. And this is compatible with all iPads from 2017, excluding the iPad mini, although some of those iPads require the MagFit magnetic case, which I'll come on to next. But if you fancy something that is a bit more than just a magnetic iPad stand, MagFit reckons it's got you covered with its take on a fully integrated hub and iPad stand solution. Now, it did take me a little while to work out exactly how to use the MagFit and how it operates, but it's actually quite straightforward when you consider that it is, in essence, an iPad stand and a 10-in-one hub combined. There are two ways to use it. You can either connect the supplied USB-C cable between your iPad and the hub, or you can connect the hub directly to your Mac. Now, if you go for the former option and connect the iPad to the stand, you get access to all of these ports on the base of the stand in iPadOS. And that means a HDMI output, Ethernet, multiple USB ports. It gives you quite a lot of functionality just by plugging the iPad into the stand. If you instead connect the hub to your Mac, you basically turn this into a Mac OS hub, which is quite useful, but you do then lose the ability to charge the iPad via the hub. The Type-C PD input on the rear of this hub can draw 100 watts of pass-through power, but will obviously only charge the iPad at its maximum wattage. But the benefit of having that 100 watts being drawn in is that you can charge multiple devices off this hub at the same time. So while you've got your iPad charging from it, you can plug in your iPhone and perhaps your AirPods. Pods. Rather than using this as a Mac hub, I did find that losing the iPad charging is a bit of a bummer in that scenario personally. It does present a rather awesome use case for anyone who wants to turn their iPad into a kind of fully fledged multi-port device because as soon as you connect this to this, you get access to SD card slots, USB-A 3.1, a 4K 60 hertz HDMI output, and it just makes the iPad a bit more of a computer. There is just one issue with this stand, which is that the Mac magnets aren't quite as strong as the other stands on this list. I don't feel overly confident placing my 12.9 inch iPad Pro on here. You can see there actually, there's a bit of movement. It's not quite as confident in terms of magnets as the other one. And when I was setting up for this A-roll shoot earlier, the iPad fell off. That almost renders this one a no-go, I'm afraid. Yeah, Magfit, you need to sort out the, the magnets. Because this is a great idea. I love the idea of having this hub built in. It's not cheap, but the magnets, I mean, you can already see it's going out of line. They're not good enough. 
So in terms of what I like about the MagFit, there's lots of utility thanks to that built-in hub. You can fold it flat for ease of transport and it adds lots of functionality for iPad OS. What I don't like, the use case does take some working out with this. That whole charging thing between the iPad and the Mac is a bit confusing. I do think it's a little bit too expensive as well, but the biggest issue, those magnets really should be stronger. Now the next stand on the list is from MagFit again, and it's basically a version of the stand that I just showed you, but without the hub thing built into the base. And also it comes complete with a case for non-magnetized iPads. Now for that package, it's $115, but you can buy the silicone case for $50 on its own. And compatibility wise, again, you can use this for all iPads from 2017, excluding the iPad mini. Now there's one caveat with all of the iPad stand options I've shown you so far. And that is that you need a magnetic iPad to use them and not all iPads come magnetized. Put simply, if your iPad isn't compatible with the Apple Magic Keyboard, it won't have the magnets required for options one to three in this list. However, don't despair because MagFit has thought of U2, which is where their liquid silicone case comes in. Now I don't have one of those to hand unfortunately, but it is basically an iPad case which both protects your case and gives it magnets in the back. And that of course means you can then connect it to a stand like this one. And in fact, probably every other stand that I've shown you in this list. It's not a bad looking case, but like I say, I haven't had it in my hands, so I can't give you a proper review of it, but it does have a useful slot for the Apple Pencil. It's microfiber lined, scratch resistant, and apparently fairly lightweight. So if you're the sort of person who places their iPad into a case immediately, the MagFit case slash stand combo might be a good fit for you. So what I like about the MagFit stand and case combo is that it allows you to use non-magnetized iPads. It's compatible with both the regular MagFit stand and the docking station version, and it combines a protective case with stand functionality. In terms of what I don't like, once again, the magnets on the stand just aren't strong enough. I think the standalone case is quite pricey at $50. And if you combine the case with the stand, it's still quite a pricey solution. I'm definitely a full iPad stand convert these days. I'm still some way from making effective use of every iPad I have to hand, but these stands really do transform Apple's tablet. If you attach your iPad to a magnetic stand like this one, it just suddenly looks and feels like a completely different device. For me, Charge M Pro's MagFlot just about pips it, thanks to the very strong magnets, the brilliant cable management, and just a lovely lightweight but solid design. But special mention must also go to Banks for being the only manufacturer in this list who thought of the iPad mini. But we're not done with the accessories yet. If you wanna see exactly how I raise the game with my iPad mini 6 even further, keep watching for a link to a video where I reveal my favorite accessories for the iPad mini. But until next time, thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.